Hello and welcome to the first part of Silk Fibroin creation and trying to turn it into a film with Michael. Uh, here's all the materials that I use to create the Silk Fibroin. Started out with Bombix Mori Silk Cocoons. Uh, we have a couple chemicals known as sodium carbonate and lithium bromide, incubators, syringes, and graduated cylinders and all the such. We'll get into it, but here is Bombix Mori. It is known of the mulberry tree in Latin and this is a silk cocoon that was harvested before the moth was able to escape so that'll be something to think about as far as its sustainability and creating uh, you know renewable resources out of this. Uh, one of the graduated cylinders will be using um, sodium carbonate which is used to alkalize and wash the silk um, to first get it ready for its chemical breakdown and then lithium bromide which is something we'll use to incubate with the silk for a while and break it down into different proteins. This is seriously a dangerous chemical. I shouldn't have even been touching it with no hand or with no gloves. Um, and a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder for the incubation. This is a 20 milliliter syringe and we'll use this for extracting and measuring and uh, just getting the uh, silk into different containers. You'll want to get 18 gauge needles and sharpen them because these dialysis cassettes are really hard to pierce through. Um, and then once we get all of that processed through the dialysis, it ends up in these test tubes, which we will use for centrifuging and storage. So in order to create the right balance of chemicals and different um, solutions that will be used to wash the film and break it down, I have to get five grams of the silk cocoons in uh, a scaled measurement. So with the worm in it, it's about 0 0.9 grams. So here I will uh, take all of the worms out of most of the cocoons for a while and uh, we'll see what happens. Some of the cocoons had a little bit of brown residual from, I don't know, what exactly, but uh, they weren't necessarily used, so I'll show you some of that later on, but here we uh, weigh out about 5 grams, which is quite a few, a little, little over 10, maybe 15 cocoons in total, and here are all the worms that were collected. They look uh, gross. So we'll have to be able to wash out and get these uh, cocoons into a more like fibrous, uh, you know, it's, um, it's consistency where, you know, it'll be as clean as possible and as well as um, ready for the incubation. So I weighed out 2.1 or so grams of the sodium carbonate and I couldn't get exact significant figures, but this is to get a 0 0.02 molar solution in one liter of water. What ended up happening though was that most of the water evaporated so I didn't boil them for exactly 30 minutes because I wanted to make sure that they were fairly clean but since so much of the water evaporated I ended up adding another liter of water before I started to wash them and I made sure to wear a mask so that was good. And here they are after being boiled. They can still be seen as a cocoon-ish but a lot of the fibers are starting to pull off and it's really fun to touch and it works really well as I would probably think as like a sponge or some sort of you know soaking up material because there was a lot of water that soaked into it so give it a nice squeeze right here and it almost feels like it pulls the water out of my hand because of how much it soaks up so a very interesting material and uh, just kind of crumbles away when it's wet but um, holds together very firmly when it's dry so um, here again just kind of having fun with it I put it on a piece of tinfoil and that's pretty much what the protocol calls for is just letting it sit in tinfoil overnight and letting it dry and getting it ready to go into this which is the lithium bromide I had to weigh out 29.3 grams of it because that's all I had, but um, I was supposed to make a 9.3 molar mass solution. So for an 86.3 gram to mole ratio, 
I needed to come up with the correct amount of water to add to the 29.3 grams. So if I originally was going to do 50 milliliters, I had to find the percentage of that amount of water, which ended up being 38 cc's or 38 milliliters. So here are two 20 cc or 20 milliliter syringes that I filled up with water that I boiled. Here is the silk going into a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. It's supposed to be pushed into a small little ball or as small as I can get it before I add the lithium bromide here again to it. So make sure to do this in a very open or ventilated area um, and wear gloves, wear a mask, and try not to do this at home. But here we are in the 2020 era and chemistry is something we do at home now. So this is slow-mo, I'm adding the water. If uh, you can see very closely, it starts to steam. Some more slow-mo here, I believe. And yeah, it's uh, very interesting stuff here, folks. So stir it up. It's a uh, very, very bad chemical. This is something that we'll want to think about going forward is uh, once the silk's been broken down, how can we recreate it just from the silk fibroin itself? So remember to do this with gloves. I forgot to wear gloves at this point, but I put the silk into the 50cc container and I, I covered the lithium bromide solution with foil so that it didn't uh, steam as I brought it outside. So I, I pour it in over the top of it and don't I, I was trying to be very careful here just uh be as careful as you can when doing chemistry at home but i i don't condone this kind of activity this is something that i did with my own risk and i wanted to make sure to incubate outside too because of the fumes that i knew it may be exhuming so all of this stuff was done as as careful as possible except for the fact that I was not wearing gloves right here. So I added it into the incubation. You can see down that it's at 49 degrees Celsius, but here it says 58. So I put it in at 49 and I let it incubate for probably four hours and then I checked it again and it still looked like that. So the total incubation time ended up taking about eight hours. So because of that and all the fumes and everything we were thinking about, here's my roommate. He was very nice enough to help me set up a fume hood in our basement and make sure everything was safe and here he is again sharpening the needle because after that eight hours of incubation we had to put it into a dialysis cassette the silk fibroin had been totally broken down well i guess it wasn't in silk fibroin version yet and it's, it's still not in silk fibroin you know pure ready to dry yet we have to put it through a series of washes in these containers which diffuse the water in and out of this uh, very kind of caustic um, more crude version of it so yes it had been broken down and washed for about a week and I'm speeding up the process here but we put it in a centrifuge and this is it after being centrifuged for 30 minutes after being washed for a week and put in a container to dry. Yes, very quick, but we want to get to that point where we can see them in pictures. So make sure to stay tuned. I uh, have the film to show you in class today, so it is somewhat ready, but we haven't been able to figure out how to put an image on it yet. Oops, didn't mean to do that when I was poking the hole there, but you do what you can. And most of it looks pretty good, and I'm excited to see what happens, and I'm excited to try it out. So thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned.